So no doubt, last time you saw this R-Pod on my channel, I had come out here secretly and installed this tongue jack, as well as this bike holder for my good friend. Anyways, we came back out because his battery continuously was going dead, so I decided to help him out with this issue. What we did was we put a box here, and it's just one of those little outdoor boxes you put your keys in or whatever you go to the beach. It's got a little rubber seal. It's not completely sealed up because I drilled holes into it, but I installed a circuit breaker on here. So now, he has his cables and everything going to a circuit breaker before it goes to the battery, and it gives you the ability to connect power or disconnect power when you're leaving. I know they make the little kill switches, but I like this better. 150 amp rated. I really don't think there's anything that would ever spike to 150 amps, otherwise he'd probably have other problems. But when he's ready to hitch up and go, he simply connects that back, and it connects the battery back to the coach as well as his charging system. But this was a really, really simple install. It took all of 15 minutes to install. I always put these on the trailers. These little circuit breakers are only about $12, $15. They don't cost very much. This is a weatherproof model. But I always put these little, little uh, enclosures in here. I might give you a link to one of these. It's got a little drain here that I drilled at the back. Just in case any water gets in here, it can drain out. And then I have this little flap that I used to cover up kind of the holes where they were. Aside from that, it works out really well. And we had a really hard rain this morning, so the fact that there's no water in there at all shows that it's doing its job effectively. This whole system works very well now. He absolutely loves this Bulldog front tongue jack and this bike holder. Everything turned out really good. What's going on guys? I am back here at the trailer for a very, very quick little product update. I have this cool sticker right here that says I protect my trailer with Fort Knox locks. And I do in terms of the fifth wheel. But on this trailer, I've been using this relatively low cost Gorilla Guard lock. Kind of slides in underneath this plate here. And it's effective for the most part. But I've seen this locking system get defeated a couple times now. And I've wanted to replace it with something a little bit more sturdy. So let me show you what we're putting on. And if you guessed that it was a Fort Knox locks, you guessed right. So I am going to be putting this Fort Knox lock also on the cargo trailer. It has this really nice puck style lock for it, which will go on the end here. But what's really nice is that it uses an abloy cylinder. This is just about the most secure form of locking mechanism you can have on this type of a lock or any lock really. So we'll be installing this on the cargo trailer. See how it looks. So installing it's actually quite simple. You'll just take this portion right here that protrudes from the bottom, put it underneath, clamshell the lock on top of it like this, and then take your lock, open it up, slide it over, and you are good to go. Now I use oversized chain hooks on mine, and typically you can kind of take your chains and you can route them inside here as well. So you're simply going to take the portion that protrudes from the bottom of this little enclosure, put it underneath, put your chains inside of it as well, close this down on top, and then take your lock, throw it on, and you are secure. And you can see there's no way for someone to steal this assembly anymore without doing severe damage to the entire assembly. And even then, if you come out here with the right tools to take this off, you probably have the right tools to do just about anything, including major construction on the trailer. So, very happy with this setup. Love the fact that it uses abloy cylinders. And I am good to go now. Guys, just like all Fort Knox locks, they are designed very, very well. I love the fact that they use really nice puck systems on them. And because the outer portion here is built out of aluminum, you don't have to really worry about seizing up or rusting on you. Guys, I'll put a link in the description of this video if you're interested in this locking system. Okay, so we are back in the trailer. I'm finally getting my voice back after a two-week cold, and I've been able to get out here and do some work. So I mounted this really cool folding stainless steel desk or workbench. Folds down flat when it's up. It has a 100-pound capacity. Stainless steel has some really nice hardware underneath. 
I mounted it directly to the wall, uh, four fasteners on each leg, and it's really so I can just have another workspace to work. On the floor I have more track system, I have some up here on the wall, I have some right here to hold this really cool garbage can that just goes right into the track system and then you can pull the garbage can portion out separate of the little mount that it's on. So that's really nice. What's nice is if I'm doing any type of drilling or work here, I can simply brush any of the scraps off into the actual trash can, which is really nice. So that's pretty much what I've been doing in here. The interior of this trailer is gonna be set up so I can use it as kind of a mobile workshop, but more importantly, I can do videos out on location if I need to do any type of work or anything like that. I don't really keep a lot in here, um, but from a you know tool perspective or spray paint cans, things like that, some of this stuff will stay in here. And I might keep a small generator in here as well, just to power the lights that I've strung up around the edge. I've also hung uh, some of this insulation panel. It has a kind of like a foil film, and it's just held up along the edge. It's super lightweight. I don't think that'll come down. That's only gonna be to kind of block or repel some of the heat that is gonna come through from the roof when it's hot in here. I'm also gonna put a small little air conditioning system in here just to make it bearable if I do plan on doing any projects. I've been out here for a couple of hours. Still have my Cove speaker and it works really well. Aside from that, let's keep the project going.